A while back, I did a video on weird shipwrecks. That video looked at ships like HMS Victoria and the Russian monitor Ruzalka sticking almost vertically out of the bottom, as well as two destroyers that, if you're brave enough, you can walk around on. However, strange shipwrecks don't end with those examples. Honestly, they don't end with these examples either. If you have further ones, by all means, let me know. I'm keeping a running tally for future videos, because these are fun to make. That aside, this particular video will focus on three examples. Two double features, and a single special ship. Mostly because one of the examples consists of two ships right next to each other. And another involves two that are so similar, they really need to be bundled in one section. With that in mind, let's get into it, starting with... Submarine Lawn Darts. Morbid jokes aside, this is one of the double features. When I covered Victoria and Ruzalka, I knew there was a German U-boat off the coast of Denmark that was also poking out towards the surface. There was, however, another one in the Mediterranean that I was not aware of. As for the one off Denmark, that was U-3523, a Type 21 U-boat the most advanced German submarine of the war. A flawed design in many ways, but still very advanced for the mid-1940s. This particular submarine was sunk by a British B-24 bomber on May 6, 1945. However, in the lack of any wreck discovery, persistent rumors stuck around this submarine. That she had escaped to South America, carrying anything from stolen gold, to the man with the funny mustache himself. Or, at the least, other high-ranking German leadership. Of course, while we don't know exactly what was on the submarine, it doesn't really matter either. The British had, in fact, sent U-3523 to the bottom. And in so doing, created one of the most interesting shipwrecks found in recent years. She was discovered in April 2018, at a depth of 123 meters, or 404 feet. This is deep enough that you would need to be a very experienced diver to make such a dive. Couple that with abysmal sea conditions, and if there's any pictures of the wreck, I've not been able to confirm them. There's a picture of a hatch and a propeller floating around, but I can't say with absolute certainty where they came from. As such, I'll only use the sonar in this video. These three pictures are interesting in their own right. For example, you can see the submarine buried in the bottom. She must have gone down very quickly, as the boat is buried up to her conning tower, with the stern sticking up towards the surface. Not quite vertical, but all the same, it's a good half or so of the submarine poking out of the bottom. In the second image, it shows a cross-section of the U-boat, along with a side view of the sonar. This also does a good job of demonstrating the angle the submarine is resting on the bottom. It looks almost like she tried to crash dive to escape attack, but was stuck in the dive until slamming into the bottom with enough speed to bury half the hull. The final sonar image reinforces that in a way. Namely because, where the submarine is buried in the bottom, there's a very visible impact crater. I'm not sure if I'm more impressed that U-3523 has remained intact for so long, or that she didn't break in two upon impact. I'll admit the sonar might be exaggerating things, but look at the depth and the size of that crater. The amount of impact force to create that and bury half a submarine in the bottom isn't exactly small, to say the least. That being said, with the sonar done, I'll move on to the other U-boat for this section of the video. Substantially less famous than the previous example, this submarine was sunk by a German mine off the coast of Italy on April 5, 1944. The submarine, U-455, mostly vanished from history at that point. She wasn't particularly successful in her career, nor was she famous as a wreck. In fact, until her discovery in 2005, the assumption had been the submarine sank near La Spezia, when in fact, she sank closer to Genoa. Her wreck is on the bottom at around 120 meters, much the same as the previous submarine. 
However, unlike the more advanced boat, U-455, a Type 7 CU boat, has been dived in some detail. As much detail as there can be, anyway, considering this is still a difficult dive. When it comes to the wreck itself, the differences with her more advanced cousin continue. Whereas U-3523 is buried by the bow, U-455 is the opposite. Her bow is pointing towards the surface, while her stern is on the bottom. This has led to some impressive pictures. The one on screen right now, for example. The overall condition on the wreck is a bit hard to make out, though. She's encrusted in sea life and draped in some fishing nets, which is about what you'd expect at this depth. When the submarine sank, about 30 feet, or 10 meters, of her stern was ripped off by the mine. However, much like with Victoria or Ruzalka, there aren't really pictures that far down, probably because of how deep it actually is. Here on the screen right now is a painting. If accurate, this submarine has her stern poking up from the bottom at the end of the intact part of the hull. The conning tower, meanwhile, has been photographed. This area shows a lot of sea life, but it's still recognizable as what it was. That said, probably the most interesting thing about the conning tower is the open hatch. The submarine struck the mine at periscope depth, so I almost wonder if that was the crew trying to escape, or if it was alternatively forced open during the sinking. In any case though, that rounds out the U-boats. There are more pictures of U-455 out there, as seen here, so I may come back to her wreck for a dedicated video. For now, I'll do a bonus submarine, and then move on. That bonus is arguably the most famous of the bunch. I-58, the Japanese submarine that sank USS Indianapolis. This submarine was scuttled after the end of the Second World War off the coast of Japan. She was forgotten about at that point until May 25th, 2017. A sonar survey found a submarine poking out of the bottom around 200 meters, 660 feet, beneath the surface. A submersible was sent down to confirm the identity of the submarine, which was apparently identified as I-58, based on the rudder. For as important, historically, as this submarine is, we only have the sonar. It does, indeed, show a submarine poking out of the bottom. Regardless, with that out of the way, let's look at the second example for today. In contrast to the submarine lawn darts, this will look at two wrecks for a different reason. Not because they're similar, although they are, but because they're right next to each other. Touching each other, in fact. Perhaps the most famous case of two ships sinking together that I can think of. Because these two ships, SMS Cormoran and the Japanese freighter Tokai Maru, are wrecks from different eras. A First World War German raider touching her stern up against a Second World War Japanese transport. The only case that immediately springs to mind, where you can dive a wreck site and put your hand on a wreck from each World War, at the exact same time. These two wrecks set at the bottom of Opera Harbor in Guam, at a depth of 120 feet at the deep end. That being 37 meters for the metric crowd. It further adds to the uniqueness of this particular wreck site. Here you have an Imperial German raider and an Imperial Japanese transport sunk practically on top of each other in an American territorial harbor. The irony is palpable. Regardless, for a quick primer, SMS Cormoran, a raider that never raided, found herself in Guam on December 14, 1914. Her captain attempted to negotiate for coal to reach German East Africa, but the American officials refused. As a result, Cormoran would remain in Guam until the United States declared war on Germany. The first shots of the war for the United States came on April 7, 1917. Shots were fired off the bow of the raider's launch as it brought supplies to the ship. Soon after, the German captain scuttled his own ship rather than let her fall into the hands of the new enemy. After slipping beneath the waves, Cormoran was mostly forgotten to the point that, 26 years later, a Japanese freighter moored right over her wreck. 
Guam was, at the time, under Japanese occupation during the Pacific War. As such, freighters and other ships came and went. This provided an opportunity for the submarine, USS Snapper, to sneak up on the freighter in question. This ship, Tokai Maru, was hit by a torpedo on August 27, 1943. The ship sank quickly, coming down almost on top of Cormoran. In fact, her hull scraped up on the German wreck as she went down. With the result that, in the modern day, the two ships are resting against one another. In the case of Tokai Maru, this is about the most interesting thing about her. Many Japanese ships of her type were sent to the bottom in the Pacific War. Truck Atoll, in particular, is a veritable treasure trove of such ships. Cormoran, meanwhile, is more unique. German merchant cruisers are rare enough as it is, but unlike her later and more famous successor, this ship is shallow enough that she can be dived by regular divers. That she happens to be touching a Japanese wreck from the Second World War just adds to the interest. Both of the wrecks are resting on their side, on the bottom. That means you can get a good look at the entire shape of both ships, from the remnants of superstructure to the keel. Of course, they're both big enough, although Tokai Maru is a good bit bigger than Cormoran, that it would take more than one dive. Although, if you can look both over, it's definitely worth it. While they're both merchant ships at their core, Cormoran is of a different era, in more ways than one. It makes a nice comparison, looking between the wrecks. This is another example where I will likely do a dedicated video in the future. For the moment, I'll make a note before we move on to the final example for this video. Cormoran is definitely in worse shape between the two wrecks. This isn't terribly surprising. She's an older ship that has been underwater for almost three more decades in comparison to her Japanese counterpart. That being said, Cormoran is remarkably well preserved for a Great War shipwreck, especially one at such a shallow depth. Most Great War wrecks are around either the North Sea or Gallipoli, and in both cases they've been subject to a lot of damage over the years. Not so with Cormoran, where she remains completely recognizable even if she is gradually falling apart. She's intact enough, in fact, that people will penetrate the wreck. Not something I'd recommend doing, but people still do it anyway. If you're able to visit Guam and are an experienced diver, by all means, visit these wrecks. They're special, and I don't know how much longer Cormoran will last, compared to Tokai Maru. Actually, that's a good note to leave off on, as I move to the final example for today. Because the final wreck for today is one that will not last forever and is worth looking at while she's still around. From a distance, admittedly, because the Australian authorities don't want more damage to the wreck or people getting hurt. That wreck, HMVS Cerberus, is a special case. She's similar to the destroyers I covered in the previous Weird Shipwreck video, in that she's in shallow enough water that people could board her wreck. However, Cerberus arguably has a more interesting story. She's the last surviving ship of the Australian colonial navies, which makes her incredibly historically significant. That is where the HMVS comes in. In this case, it stands for Her Majesty's Victorian Ship. Cerberus served in the navy of the colony of Victoria, before transferring to the Royal Australian Navy upon the formation of that force. That alone makes Cerberus special. She is also one of a relative handful of original monitors still sticking around. Not to mention she has Cole's turrets, which are an important invention that vanished from history over the years. Cerberus has been resting in shallow water in Half Moon Bay near Melbourne since the 1920s. In that time, she's been something of a local landmark. This could be expected because she rests in around 10 feet, 3 meters, of water, and only 650 feet, 200 meters, from shore. As a breakwater, it's no surprise that she's in shallow water. This resulted in the Hulk becoming a dive spot while people would climb aboard her resting decks for picnics and exploration. At least until the 1990s. 
While Cerberus had remained largely intact up to that point, even as her hull began to open to the water, that changed in 1993. The Hulk suffered a major collapse in that year. Her deck supports and frames began to give way after decades of rust and wave action. That left only deck beams supporting her decks and turrets, which is not exactly a good thing with how heavy those turrets are. Understandably, the local authorities put an exclusion zone around the wreck before someone with more bravery than brains got themselves killed. Unfortunately, I've seen reference to someone doing just that and drowning on her wreck in 2010. Or, at the least, there was a body found in the wreck at that time. This is quite a bit different from Corey and Thompson, the two destroyers I mentioned earlier. Neither of those ships have heavy superstructure and turrets, weighing them down. Even then, they do have their own risks to keep in mind. As for Cerberus, efforts have been ongoing, off and on, to try and stabilize the wreck. These have ranged from being as ambitious as raising the Hulk to restore her, to simply reinforcing the wreck enough to stabilize her pending better ideas. There was even a plan to pour a bunch of concrete into the wreck. I think that's going beyond stabilizing, to making a concrete mess vaguely shaped like Cerberus, myself. In any event, Cerberus continues to deteriorate. Her guns were removed in the early 2000s, coated with preservative, and placed on the bottom next to the wreck. Her turrets remain clearly recognizable above the waterline, along with the remnants of her funnel. If you look at her from above, you can also see the hull form just beneath the surface. However, if something isn't done to preserve her properly, I don't know how much longer she'll last. That being said, we come to the end of the video. As I said at the start, I could easily do more videos like this, looking at other weird shipwrecks. If you have any suggestions, by all means put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.